Good morning, everybody. My name is Matt Martin. I'm the marketing manager here at Reserve Advisors. Uh, today, we have a presentation for you on uh, Montgomery County benchmarking requirements. Uh, joining me today will be Nick Julia from our Arlington, Virginia office. He'll be speaking on the, on the new requirements regarding energy. Before I turn it over to Nick, though, I did have a couple of quick housekeeping items. Today's webinar will be recorded, and we'll be sending that to everybody that registered. So whether you stick around for the whole webinar or not, we will send the webinar recording to you. And then if you do have any questions, we do have some time on the back end for Q&A. So if this is your, if this is your first time using, uh, using Zoom, there is a Q&A function uh, within the Zoom panel. Uh, you should see that there. You can drop any questions in there along the way. And Nick and I will have visibility to those at the end of the presentation. Uh, we can go through those and provide some additional insight for you. So without further ado, Nick, I'll turn it over to you to get started on the presentation. Uh, thanks so much, Matt. And yes, as Matt said, we appreciate everyone joining us today. Uh, real quickly, want to talk through the agenda, uh, you know, really just plan to go through the energy benchmark basics, uh, as well as talk about the BEPS basics, and then kind of some of the actions plans that's come about from the BEPS and that is implemented by Montgomery County, uh, and also just benchmarking verification, how that plays a part in uh, just the benchmarking as well as BEPS and all of that. And then, as Matt said, we can open up to any questions at the end. Um, but first off, wanted to quickly talk through just the basic, what is energy benchmarking? And, you know, that is the process of assessing the energy use of a building and then comparing it to the building's past performance, uh, as well as similar buildings of the same type. And I think the ultimate thing, this is why we underline it here, it's, it's motivating performance improvement. So the idea, you know, with Montgomery County, DC has enacted these plans. Maryland just passed the Climate Solutions Now Act of 2022. You know, we're seeing many more municipalities. Montgomery County was a little bit ahead of saying, well, energy benchmarking is that first step. Um, assessing that energy of the building, where does the building stand compared to similar building types? Um, and that was implemented, and we'll go to that in a second, you know, back in 2014. Again, Montgomery County, um, sorry, they're skipping ahead. Uh, Montgomery County passed the benchmarking law in 2014. They amended it once in 2015, Bill 3515. And it started, next slide I'm gonna to go to kind of shows, it's been a tiered approach, but right now in 2024, public and privately owned buildings that are comprised over 25,000 square feet or larger are required to annually benchmark. And the deadline, talk about further in the slides, is June 1st of every year or the first business day of June. So this year for 2024, it will be June 3rd. Um, why we wanted to hold this webinar now is the last group in that is group five. And group five targets multifamily residential buildings between 25,000 square feet and 250,000 square feet. So this is the last group. Um, it started with county buildings. And again, I'll show a slide in a minute showing kind of what they, they uh, tiered in. Um, but if you're curious, well, does my building apply? You know, I'm not sure. Am I in that group five? Am I not? Uh, there is a covered buildings inventory. And I should have mentioned too, Montgomery County has a great site, the Department of Environmental Protection, um, where you can find a lot of this data. And a lot of the data I'm describing today, it is on their website as well. And one of the links that they have there is a covered buildings inventory. And what that will do is it'll provide you an Excel sheet where you can see the group that your building's in and if your address of your building and also the, an approximate square footage. Now that obviously is coming from public records where they're taking that covered buildings inventory but you should be able to know right away, or you probably also received a letter, which is very possible from the Department uh, of Energy itself. Either one of those two would indicate that you are now required to start this benchmarking as well if you're in group five. So, real quickly, just to what I was just talking through, here's the kind of the benchmarking law on the timeline. So in 2014, it started with the county owned buildings. Group two brought in commercial buildings. Uh, group three stayed with commercial and county, but it lowered that square footage requirement. And group four, which was 2022, was the first time that multifamily residential buildings were required. Now, those were for big high rises over 250,000 square feet. Um, Montgomery County does have, you know, those buildings. But what really dropped that uh, threshold lower was group five with the multifamily buildings, again, of 25,000. Um Something to mention very quickly is you might see on, from this graphic that 2023 was the first calendar year of benchmarking. With benchmarking, you're taking the previous year's data. So, you're, so we're looking at the 12 months between January 1st to December 31st of 2023, and that's the data that's being evaluated for the benchmark. 
So you always are looking at the previous year when you're conducting the benchmark. So a 2024 benchmark that's you know required to be done by 2020 um, June 1st, sorry, to June 3rd this year is looking at that 2023 data. So what's kind of another layer to this is the benchmarking law was 2014, 2015. And then there is BEPS, which is Building Energy Performance Standards. And that was that was presented 2017, Montgomery County declared kind of a climate emergency. Well, we have benchmarking law in place. We are, you know, it's the first step. Buildings are tracking, you know, where their EUI uh, and their energy usage is going. But how are we going to take this one step further to, you know, encourage um, increasing efficiency on energy for buildings. And so Bill 1621 was presented in May 2021. And what that did is a couple things. One, it expanded the number of buildings covered under the benchmarking law, going back to that group of where it was. Uh, and secondly, it adds a performance requirement. in. So now, and this is again, similar to many municipalities where uh, BEPS wants to see the energy use of each building be lowered. Uh, and how Montgomery County is targeting that is the energy usage intensity, which is EUI. And there's a few different metrics you'll see. You'll see energy score. You'll also see energy usage intensity. And many times the acronym is EUI, site EUI. Um, and this, this EUI is established based on the property type. So an EUI for a commercial or county building might be different than a multifamily residential EUI. Um, but it's establishing kind of those baselines. And every five years, proper properties are moving forward, going to be evaluated for compliance with these interim targets. Um, Montgomery County is looking at a straight line standard. Um, so what that means is they're I'm going to show a graphic in a minute here. You kind of establish where the baseline BEPS is. From there, there's interim targets to hit with the goal of lowering even further. And right here, this is what this is the graphic I wanted to show to kind of pinpoint where what that looks like. So you have your baseline years. In five years, are interim standards, and then the fine, final standard compliance. Um, something worth knowing is the final standard compliance is still a ways in the future. For Group 5, residential buildings 25,000 to 250,000 square feet. The final BEPS deadline as of now, as passed by the law, is December 31st, 2036. So they're the baseline years are going to be 2023 to 2025. Then there's an interim period in 2031, and then five years later, the final BEPS. So 2026 is going to establish what those those regulations are. Now, something I wish I had more information on is, well, what is the EUI? What are they looking for? That is still being um, kind of reviewed. So there isn't tangible numbers to this yet, but we're still in those baseline years where they're they're measuring these bu the building's energy usage to then kind of come up with these standards. But they have established their target deadlines for when they want that final standard compliance deadline to hit. Um, already talked through this, but you know, essentially every municipality is different. DC, for example, is April 1st. So if you've worked or heard of the DC BEPS, uh, DC and Montgomery County are slightly different. Montgomery County is June 1st, though. And again, first business day. So this year in 2024, that will be June 3rd. Um, but just it's a deadline that's important to know because both BEPS, the um, BEPS need to be submitted through Energy Star Portfolio Manager and the benchmarking needs to be completed by that June 3rd deadline. Um, one item we haven't mentioned is Montgomery County follows, you know, the standard um, software that almost all municipalities we see are using, which is Energy Star Portfolio Manager. So when working through your benchmarking and your BEPS, that is where you are going online to create a profile, add in your building details. And that's either if you're doing a self benchmark or you're having a um, an independent contractor, you know, such as reserve advisors, complete your benchmarking in your BEPS. We're going to be using uh, Energy Star Portfolio Manager. So, kind of what what steps are there? Can we talk about Energy Star Portfolio Manager too. You know, it's we really need the energy use. When we look at this EUI, we're utilizing the previous year's uh, energy usage, as we talked about. Um, and so that's really the most important. Um, if you're doing your benchmarking, you're going to collect your bills from last year. You're going to make sure that you have the gross square footage because that's a major uh, factor in um, providing that EUI score. Uh, and you're going to need the meter counts for both gas, electric, any, any utility data you have. Uh, Montgomery County uh, is not requiring water. Water is a little bit separate. But when you look at your gas and electricity, that's really what's focusing on for the main parameters of what the site EUI is going to, um, you know, calculate using Energy Star, and and it allows you to input all these data fields, 
and then it will tell you that site EUI, which then is submitted and department, uh, the Montgomery County uh, Department of Energy will review that data. So uh, some of these things I've jumped ahead a little bit, but can, you know, can, who can conduct benchmarking, you or an energy service provider. Um, sometimes we have seen individuals self-benchmark, but at the same time, having an energy service provider such as Reserve Advisors do it ensures familiarity with Energy Star portfolio. And just, you know, you're having a third set of third party set of eyes look at that. Um, when it comes to benchmarking, and I want to make sure we keep those two separate, BEPs and benchmarking are a little bit different there. So again, benchmarking can be felt done. Um, and BEPs, which is another slide further, we'll talk through that, has a little bit more regulations to who can conduct, um, you know, the, uh, or sorry, for the verification. I'm sorry, we were talking about the verification. Um, so with that verification, one thing that Montgomery County has is you need to verify the first year and every third year thereafter. Verification is ensuring the data that's in Energy Star Portfolio Manager is accurate. Um, and so, you know, sometimes what we've seen in the past is individuals, obviously, accidentally, you might be putting in the wrong square footage based on a tax record, um, or it's just a field wasn't entered correctly, and that could have a major impact on your site EUI. Um, so uh, the verification process was put in place, you know, as industry best practice to ensure a third party is looking at that. Um, and it, it, what that does is there's a few different steps. Uh, it's, you know, it's credentialed individual to review the property. Credentialed individual could be a PE, could be a certified en en energy manager, excuse me. Uh, can there's a few other um, credentials that are required when you're doing that verification. Um, in addition to that, in a benchmark each year, you're submitting just the data, but with the verification, there is an additional verification data checklist that has to be signed off by that recognized data verifier with the credentials. So if you're in the group five, for example, this year, and your building is over 25,000 square feet, um, you, can, you wouldn't be able to conduct the benchmark on your own. You would need to make sure that data was also verified. Well, you could, but you have to have both done at the same time. Now the interim period, it's the first year and every third year, you can self-conduct your own benchmark, but in between there, this verification is required. Um, a couple other facts to touch on with the verification. Um, it can be virtual, uh, but however, that re relies on information being provided to the recognized data verifier, the meter numbers, utility bills. Uh, if there's any questions on any of that, then sometimes a site visit is required for the verifier to be able to check, again, on meter numbers, uh, check square footage. And that's another big portion of this is knowing the building's size. Um, pricing. We know this is always a question that comes up. When you're looking at the verification specifically, you know, it typically ranges from 2000 to 5000 Now, there are incentives through Montgomery County Green Bank to support energy services, uh, Montgomery County Green Bank is a nonprofit corporation dedicated to kind of accelerating energy efficiency. So there are ways to lower this um, this fee as well. Um, but when you're looking at the verification, there are additional steps with that. Um, so that's typically the price range that you're likely going to see. Um, at the end of the verification, as I mentioned, that data verification checklist is submitted to the Department of Environment Protection. And another part of the, uh, the the verification is the gross floor area verification. Now, in some areas, this is completely separate. Montgomery County doesn't differentiate. Um, however, it, it's still, this is probably one of the biggest impacts, as I mentioned, that we'll have on your uh, site EUI. So as part of that verification, it's the process of, of verifying the, the floor area, which there's stipulations to that, attics, crawl spaces, what can and can't be included. Um, it, you know, basements should be, common spaces should be, attics, crawl spaces should not. So, you know, we talked about that uh, covered building list. On that list in inventory, they're going to give you a square footage, but that's pulling from public tax records. In our experience, those records are not always correct. So the GFA, you know, goes hand in hand with the data verification. Um, and that's something that is kind of an additional step that I always like to highlight because you know, if you're going through a recognized data uh, provider, they're going to uh, ask quite a few questions about the gross floor area because it is something that they will need to verify. Um, 
outside of that, I, I mean, that's really the wrap up there. I want to talk through uh, the benchmarking, the BEPS, and also what the verification process entails. Are there any questions that, that I can help answer for everyone? 